Don't you just hate it when you make a cup of tea and you know the, the tea bag kind of I don't know it kind of bursts a little bit I guess and you get all these little tea leaves floating oh, around in yeah. there and you keep the cup in the there tea yeah the stuck at the bottom and stuff <sighs> horrible anyway let's get on with this week's gaming news roundup all right first up this week a representative from gray market key reseller g2a took part in a q a panel at this week's reboot conference in croatia the representative mario marek tried to defend his employer's reputation insisting g2a does not operate in the grey market. Marek also said their partnership with Gearbox wasn't called off because of their reputation, but because of Total Biscuit complaining about them. Finally, Marek said people shouldn't criticise them because 40% of their 750 employees are women. So yeah, they're not bad guys, honest. I mean, women. Anyone who spends this amount of time insisting that they're not bad guys. Yeah. Are bad guys. The thing with Gearbox that he's talking about there, the fact that their partnership over the Bulletstorm full clip edition, if you don't know about this, the Gearbox had temporarily partnered with G2A to release an exclusive version of Bulletstorm full clip edition, which came out recently. YouTuber Tall Biscuit got on, you know, found out about this, made a video about it, suddenly um, they're not partnered anymore. And Gearbox actually approached Tall Biscuit for a rundown of like, okay, tell us why G2A is so bad. The fact that Gearbox needed Tall Biscuit to tell them <laughs> how bad G2A <laughs> was. It's pretty bad. This is the latest in a long series of things like, you know, they've done Reddit AMAs, they've done all kinds of engagement activities where the whole point has been, honestly, we're not <laughs> we're not bad people. Uh, we're not a bad website. Well, you are. So I watched a little bit of this conference and the developers are asking them these serious questions and his responses are just like, yeah, whatever. Like, for example, well, sometimes you sell keys from different regions. Can you not see that being a problem? How, how can you manage that? And then his response is, well, really, it should be up for the developers to find out themselves. Yeah. And then they say, well, do you have the ability to check that? And he says, yeah. Like, that's it. <laughs> F***ing hell, Mario. Make an effort, man. Impressionist. <laughs> now, and I know that, you know, you've got all these, like, snobby yeah. game developers who were, like, yeah. to be fair, it's like the House of Commons in there because they're all chortling. They're all, yeah. like, scoffing and just being stupid idiots and tweeting. But he's not helping by the fact that he's broed out with a cap on just like, yeah, well, to be fair, the developers do get 10%. F off. And uh, so to the uh, G2A representative who emailed us recently asking if we were going to be an affiliate for them. Also f off. kind of your answer, I suppose. Also in the news this week, the Xbox One Scorpio has, of course, been dominating the Microsoft-related headlines recently, but the company is also continuing its push on PC gaming. The company made a surprise announcement this week that Halo Wars Definitive Edition will be coming to Steam as well as the Windows 10 Store. Halo Wars Definitive Edition, which was released on Thursday, is a remastered version of the original Halo Wars, which came out back in 2009 for the Xbox 360 and also released as an extra with the Bonerific Edition of Halo Wars 2 in February this year for Xbox One and PC. The Steam RRP is a very reasonable $20. More games on PC is always good and it's nice to see Microsoft bringing their games to Steam as well. It should be said though that the Steam version of Halo Wars will actually be separate from the Windows Store and Xbox One versions, which means users will not be able to cross-play between the two stores. That is ridiculous. Yeah. I'm pleased that Halo, War Halo Wars is coming to PC. I'm delighted about it actually. But the fact that you're se segregating um, the PC player base, as was the case with a recent Call of Duty title, of, uh, I believe, where the Windows Store PC players and the Steam PC players were split for some f***ing reason. That's ridiculous and it shouldn't be up. Imagine a PlayStation game or an xbox one game guys okay mm. and you can only play with other people that bought it from amazon yeah. or from gamestop or game imagine segregating it like that it would be ridiculous right well that's exactly what they're doing now it's just one shop it doesn't matter yeah. as long as the game's on the same console it's not good for the game here. it's like diluting the player base of the game it's bad nobody wants that yeah. why would you do that to uh, do, do you want to oh halo wars is on steam on sale oh mate i've got the microsoft edition yeah oh well, it, then i'm not buying it oh okay the end. Also this week, the Olympic Council of Asia announced they'll be making efforts to bring esports into the 2022 Asian Games as a medaled event. Seriously, we could be looking at a world where people can win sports medals for playing video games. F you, Dad. Some of the games which will be featured at the event include esports heavy hitters like FIFA 17, MOBAs, most likely Dota or League of Legends, and RTS games, probably StarCraft 2 because Korea. This comes not long after the South Korean organization, the International Esports Federation, submitted a request for esports consideration to the International Olympic Committee. In other semi-sports news, football with cars but also way better than that simulator, Rocket League, has hit an impressive milestone this week. The game's official Twitter account tweeted, there are now 30 million unique player accounts registered. Not bad 
bad for a downloadable indie game. These figures don't represent actual sales figures, which developer Psyonix said was around 10.5 million, not counting those who got the game free from PS Plus back in 2015. Rocket League is notable for its continued growth and success almost two years after it launched, and Psyonix themselves said they're not in a rush to develop a sequel because why abandon the huge community they've already built? In industry slash business news, I guess. Publishing giant Ubisoft keep on getting bigger as they've announced plans to open two new studios this year. This is good news for developers in a time where more and more big studios are having to close down due to skyrocketing costs of game development. Ubisoft have yet to say what projects these studios will be working on, but in all likelihood, it will probably be more Assassin's Creed and Far Cry. In Nintendo news, not long after the company announced the discontinuation of the NES Mini, rumours started to make the rounds that a SNES Mini, which is totally pronounced SNES is going to launch this year. Sources told Eurogamer development of the SNES Mini is well underway at Nintendo with plans to launch in time for the holiday season. The NES Mini launched with 30 installed games and sold out almost everywhere instantly. The only hope of getting one is to pay over the odds on eBay because of scalpers buying up every last console. Hopefully this time Nintendo will order enough to meet demand if, you know, they like money. So, what do you guys think? Do you hate it when little tea leaves get caught in your drink and they get in your throat and your teeth and everything, it's really annoying. Or maybe any of the news stories we just talked about interested you. Let us know down in the comments below anyway. Check us out here. We've got lots more videos. We've also got Patreon now if you'd like to support the channel. Or for free, just subscribe, like us, leave a comment, telling us how great we are. Thanks very much and we'll see you next time.